So welcome to the second part of Uwe's Jagger Tutorials number 4 with the chain. We will focus on team techniques, so partner training with the chain, how to block the chain, how to attack the chain, how the chain itself can do attacks against an opponent and some basic suggestions when you are making your own chain. And I'm very happy to have Jasper here and Niklas as partners to show you uh, how to play with and against the staff, the longsword and the shield. So welcome to Uwe's Jagger Tutorials. Okay, now, shield against chain is quite interesting because many people think that the shield would be perfect against the chain and indeed if a chain is attacking with a vertical swing it is quite nice to have a shield because the straight hits with a vertical chain they will mostly be deflected by the shield like that and the shield player can attack. The problem is only if the chain is so bad to swing horizontally then you have no chance with a front shield because the chain player might just try to hit around the shield player, like that. And so we're hitting him in any case. When you're approaching a chain as a shield player, try to hold your shield to the side. So not in front of you, but loosely to the side. So that you can react. You can draw it forward if need be, but you can also push it back to catch the chain from the side if need be. So holding the shield loosely instead of right in front of you like a wall is a wise decision when you're going against the chain as a shield player. The Spaniards have developed quite an interesting defense technique uh, that is that the shield goes down as much as, as possible without losing full mobility so you, you should still be able to, uh, to move and you're taking your shield back on your back almost um, and also, and that is very important, your short sword should come back almost to your back and protect your side. We will see that now. As you can see here, the chain is caught by the shield and the ball, which uh, can come round even so, is catched by the short sword. But um, what is also very important for a shield player is to jump and to go down just in time. And attack, exactly. And the same goes for going down. An easy thing, but the timing is quite important. Good training. You don't have much range. That means you have to jump in as much as possible. Don't jump into the chain, because the chain player might not like it. But um, try to cover the distance at the right point, not as fast as possible, because if you are coming against the chain player, then the chain player can choose the right time to attack your feet, um, and you are quite helpless against that. You can jump there, but it's hard. So the timing is crucial when you are covering the distance. And there you have to look, sort of, at the chain. You can see where the swing is coming. Here's coming the swing, here's going, coming, going, coming, going, coming, going. And you are attacking when the swing is just about to go. So coming, going, coming, coming. Exactly. When you're playing against the chain, the most important thing is to get distance to your body. And that you are achieving by stretching out your uh, spar as much as possible, so that when the chain is coming in, it will not reach the body but go around your spar. Um, the other thing is what you can do, of course, many players don't touch the ground with that spar and so the chain can go under it and then, of course, you will have to jump, like this. And then you can attack. If you see that the chain is attacking uh, upwards, then, of course, you can go down and try to hit the chain. But at the same time, when you are going down, just try to attack instantly, so that the chain does not have time to get its chain going again, like this. Exactly. Another issue is if you are catching the chain and the chain is coming around your spark, you can draw a bit like this, but you should not continue to draw 
You attack now me and try to hit me without hitting me with a chain, but you don't continue to fight until the chain is loose again. Because if you start attacking other players and continue to play, there is a high danger that someone gets hit by the chain links that are uh, wrapped around your spot. So first thing is, do not draw on the chain, famous for the chain player, do not draw on a chain that is caught by a spar, but let it get free. Um, the opponent can draw shortly to get hold of your chain. When you are fighting against the chain, don't forget that you have a long staff in your hand, which you can of course use to catch the chain and stop it really. So if the, if the opponent is coming close and is coming down, attacking your feet, then you can try to catch the chain and press it down to the ground, so that the chain player can try to get loose, but he doesn't manage it. And then you have him, of course. If you keep your distance in mind as a defensive player, then you might have an easy time to have a look at the distance and to just catch the chain and throw it over your head. So like this. I'm attacking. Like that. And if he draws himself in, he can easily catch me now while I'm trying to get a grip again before I can start up the chain again. For the training of the chain, the problem is if you're always training only one side, your shoulder will be in bad shape, in bad condition after a certain time. Therefore, I would recommend that you, first of all, hear what your body says. If your shoulder is starting to hurt, then it might be time to rest. And um, on the other hand, it might be quite good to change the hand for chain training, so you have both shoulders who are uh, stressed by the training itself. So this shoulder once, and then after training it with this shoulder, just change it to the other shoulder, so the other shoulder gets its share. Another way to train and to get a feeling for the chain is uh, the direction change. Try to change the direction as good as you can and then just see how it works out. Try to do an 8, a lying 8 here, and as you can see, if you're doing it with not enough force, then you're hitting your own legs. Not so good. That means you also get a feeling for the momentum needed to get the chain going and not to draw it too hard. Most important when playing the chain is the distance. It may be the distance to your opponent, it may be the range of your chain. You have to learn how long your chain is, in fact. And to do that, you can train the distance by trying to reach some target, in our case a skull. And uh, since this is a demonstration video, I have to choose a very short distance for it, so I cannot really shoot out the chain. But, I mean, it's not that hard. You are just trying to reach your target, that's all. Okay, very good. One more, and you see that it's a bit too short because I don't want to shoot the skull away, but even so, uh, I will train my feeling for the distance by this. The other thing that you should train is your aim. Try to hit something direct. Not only will the train the feeling for the distance itself, but it will also try to train the control over the chain and, of course, just aiming, as the word is saying. So take the target, can do a horizontal or a vertical swing, like a vertical because it's a low, and you can try to hit it. And if you did not succeed, do not hesitate to try again. The whole thing, of course, do that with more space because, as I said right here, the distance is much too short. If I want to do it really with my foot, so I would have to have uh, a target that's farther away. Like that. Um, if you are just swinging your chain uh, like usual, it's no problem for your opponent to catch your chain because he knows when the chain will be coming. So, try to do fast swings in training, try to do very slow chains in training, and then the point is to do fast and attacking with the slow.
come to a short chain making tutorial. I don't want to torture you again like in the first tutorial with many step by step baguettes, but some basic uh, suggestions when you are making your own chain. Um, good, let's go. What do you need to make your own chain? The first thing, most important of course, is the chain. The second thing is something like padding for the first meter of the chain. The next thing is of course a handle to hold your chain. And uh, the most obvious thing of course, beside of the chain, is the ball. Beside that you will need some leather straps or something similar. You will need some tight straps, like this here, two of them. Uh, just a bit longer than you need to go one time around the ball. Um, then you will need normal tape, you will need double-sided tape, you will need a sharpener, you will need something like this probably. We will see. First, the chain itself. Well, for a long time we used these chains. And you can see with this chain it has nice big links and it handles very well. It's very nice to handle it, it's very nice to swing it, it's a nice feeling. And it looks just awesome when you are carrying it around on the field. Only problem is, this chain is a plastic chain. And if you have hollow links, then it will break, well, almost instantly. So just be careful that you are buying a solid plastic chain. You can just cut into it uh, in the shop and look whether it's hollow or with, whether it's solid. But even if it's solid, you have the problem that it might break much, much earlier than another chain that I will show you soon. Um, it's also a bit heavier than the alternative. The alternative that has recently been discovered, um, that is this kind of a chain. And you see the links are much smaller. The links are thicker at the end. And this is in fact a nylon chain. And it's said that it almost never breaks, so it has an excellent quality, it's very stable, it's very lightweight. Um, well, and the small links, you can like them, you can hate them. I think they are nice to handle, I like the big links much more, I have more in my hand, but on the other hand, you, you might be even more agile when you are using this kind of a nylon chain. So if you have the chance to get your hands on a nylon chain, just choose the nylon chain over the plastic chain. You might be much happier with it and it might not even be much more expensive if you are buying a bit more of it. The next thing that is Crucial for a chain is the handle and again it's up to you which handle you take. I like the kite handles here um, because they are lightweight, they are nice, they are very stable, very robust and uh, they are just fitting well for the chain. Um, so this one or something else, just choose what fits best. Very important as well is the padding. The padding of the first meter of the chain is quite crucial or at least 80 centimeters. Many say that 80 centimeters are enough. I personally, yes, I think 80 centimeters would suffice. But if you are uh, attending a tournament in Germany or in Sweden, you should have one meter padding. So just take the one meter instead of the 80 centimeter, just to be sure. And if you are beginning to play Jagger, please take safety first and not some thought of, oh, I could be a bit faster if I'm padding only 50 centimeters, I will be much better, I'm a ninja. You are not a ninja and your opponent might be hurt. It is your responsibility that your opponent is fine. Take one meter for the beginners and later you may shorten it to 80 centimeters if you wish. Some people are even padding the whole length of the chain with something like a tube. That might be quite a nice idea because it can happen and it will happen that you hit yourself into your face or into your teeth if you are not really careful. So a padding uh, uh, along the whole length might be interesting. I personally have no experience with that, how the chain behaves with it, so it's just up to you um, to choose. The next very important thing, of course, is the ball itself. It's just a soft ball like this. I'll take this one here, a solid soft ball, um, and when you have that you just need some leather straps two times will you wrap the leather around it and the leather you need uh, for protecting the ball when you're attaching the actual straps. You need the straps in this technique for attaching the chain to the ball and you will need two of these straps. One, two. Look where I'm 
overlapping the straps. The straps overlap on the back side of the ball um, and you are gluing them here together. To glue them to the ball and glue them together I recommend to use double-sided tape. In ancient times we used Patex but I wouldn't recommend that. It's not the best one, it's ancient. Um, on the front side of the ball, there you will have to make a little bridge, you could say, a little hollow piece, and this piece here you will need to put a bit of rope through it, or you need to put your link through it. Um, some people draw the straps through the links, I prefer to make it with a known rope and draw first a rope under this sort of bridge and then through the links and just attach it like that. That's up to you, just choose which fits you best. And when you have done that, first the leather, then the strap, then a rope through this one here to attach your, your uh, links, then you can attach your chain and in the last step, after attaching the handle, you can attach the padding of the meter. And for the padding, there are two ways that I have tried. And the most common way is to use tube insulation like that. You are just cutting the tube insulation into small bits that just fit through the links here, so it's really, if you look at this, it is quite a small bit indeed that I have to cut off. And if you are using nylon, then you have the problem that it's really small indeed. With these plastic links, with 8 cm, uh, it might not be a problem because the padding is quite broad. But with this one, we have a padding that's not broad at all, it might just rip off quite easily. Therefore, I'm doing my chain padding now by using this here, what I need for uh, my spars in any case to make them. And I'm just cutting small straps of this padding here. They just uh, should be so broad to fit through the links and then I'm just pushing it through the links. Look at this, it should be pushed so far that it goes right over the link. So not only to here, but really over that. One, one more over it, and it must be long enough to go over the other side of the link as well. So this is actually a bit too short. And then you are just fixing it with tape. Same applies for the ball, of course. When you have done your straps and when you have attached your chain, you take your good old tape to tape your whole ball with it, and then your good old chain is finished, and you are, you are ready to rumble. One word about the gloves. Um, I have said that the most uh, endangered part of your hand when playing jacket is the thumb. And hockey gloves might be interesting if you take away most of the padding and only leave the fingers padded. So a cheaper way would be to buy a normal glove and take a bit of soft padding, cut it in here, put it here over the thumb and then cover it with tape and so you have quite a good protection for your thumb and uh, well for me it, it seems that these gloves are absolutely sufficient to protect your thumb from being hit. So thank you very much, I hope you have a nice time making your chains. Just uh, remember, you the chain player are the most dramatic person on the field. All photographers will love you and will take photos of you. So make a nice chain and make an impression.